Our stuff. I started working here because I needed the money and I didn't find anywhere else. I know this work because of my sister-in-law. We tell each other what happens on our days. Who is cute and stuff. I get along with everyone, including my customers. I mean, my coworkers. Mm. Eh. Not so much. 
they barely do anything so me and my sister-in-law has to do it I started working as a CNA when I first came to America around 20 years ago. My job has helped me connect with over a thousand different people and hear more many of their different life stories in the process. That's one of the reasons why when a client passes away, it's tough. My mother is elderly and sometimes she reminds me of some of the clients to take care of. I took the job because I believe that clients have family and people that care for them. They're just old now and can't really take care of themselves much. But that doesn't mean they shouldn't be taken care of. Some days clients have bad days due to health conditions that seem to change their personality completely up. But it's good to see them attempt to stay in a positive mood when they realize how they're acting. I became an influencer at the age of 10. I get to work with many different celebrities. A lot of people who don't agree with what I do and say. So I get a lot of hatred and backlash. Sometimes I do want to quit because of the threats and hatred that I do get. But I know the ones that love and support me would be disappointed that I let it get to me. But I'm only a child. Sometimes I sit and read my comments and DMs and see all the people I help by just simply putting out a 30 second TikTok or a 16 minute YouTube video. As a lifeguard, skating the water for nine hours gets pretty tiring. Fast. I took the job for a lot of reasons, but my most important one was to keep kids safe. Even if I'm not really a big fan of kids. Although I took on the job to keep kids safe, seeing guests in pain is always really hard. Oh, but every once in a while, our head guards would throw the brick to the bottom of the deep end of our pool and make us retrieve it. Recently? It's been a game to see how many people can get it in one trip. And after very good months, our head guards will throw us a party and all the guards go get ice cream and watch a movie. If I were to describe my job in one word, it would be preventative. Makes sense, since I work for the Chicago Department of Public Health and that's what we do. The fundamental aspect of public health is to prevent illness. Working as the executive assistant at the Department of Public Health means that I focus on administrative tasks, making sure that they are completed. I'm also the jack of all trades. If you don't know what that means, I'm basically the person who has knowledge on a lot of things but doesn't know what they mean or how to do them. The biggest challenge that I face every day is telling people how to do their job. It annoys me so much when my coworkers are doing nothing when there's so much to do. I vividly remember during college that it was my dream job. A lot of people were interested in public health and hoped that they would one day work for one of the departments. I think I'm really lucky to have this job. I have a great one and there are milestones every day. I grow as both a person and an employee. Hey, I've been running all day and night. I have this writer block that stays. I love my job and my free time. When there's no work to be done, I spend some free time. Family is the most important thing to me. I chose this job because of the creativity and freedom I have that could be shared with the world. My children inspire me to write sometimes. The Aaron brains are always working up some story to tell. Mm. I've always worked from home. That's something I'm comfortable with. Shy towns my home, by the way. A great place to say hey. Right, what I was saying. Writing can do all sorts of things, like writing an article, a story, or something useful. To take an idea in your head and write it down on paper is a writer's greatest accomplishment. That's it. My job is dynamic, to say the least. You have to be really adaptable to change. Most people don't even realize the insane caseload we get. 
and honestly, I had no idea either until I started working this job. It's a real hassle, but that's not even close to the hardest part of the job. No, the hardest part really is just how mentally demanding it is. You have to deal with everybody else's trauma all day, and it's mostly kids who just started adulthood. It's it's difficult. It's sad, really. You know, in some ways I can relate to these kids. As a teen, I, I hated law enforcement too. I still do in some ways. It's just disheartening to see bad things going on around you. But that's why I chose this job, counseling. I'm a good person. I'm trying to be the positive change I wanna see. I'm just trying to help these kids. I'm tired, oh I'm tired, I work two jobs on my own, I'm tired, oh I'm tired, do the work when I come home, yes it's hard but you get to make your own days. Yes, it's stressful, but you get to make your own way. Gotta make sure everyone's on time. You're on time, but there's no time to unwind. I'm tired. Oh, I'm tired. I want two jobs on my own. I'm tired. Oh, I'm tired. Don't go up. When I come home Got a lot of schoolwork Gotta stay woke Go to school and to work So I won't stay broke Twice the work and twice the cost But I don't get no sleep at all I'm tired Oh, I'm tired so hard on yourself take out some time to relax remember everything's gonna be okay i'm tired oh i'm tired i work two jobs of my own i'm tired oh i'm tired Do school work when I come home. In medical research, it's hard to see a direct application sometimes. It feels like I'm doing this research for the sake of research and not because it's going to help people. But what I do always seems like a direct path to helping people. I'm constantly working with traumatized brain cells to figure out why some treatments work well and some don't affect patients much at all. Something else I do constantly is taking care of cells. I do this every other day. I replenish their environments with amino acids and sugars to make sure they can survive outside the human body. I like to think of it as cell babysitting. I'm the one who has to keep them safe and make sure they're doing well. I suppose a downside is that science happens when it happens. I've had to work late and come in early. It's difficult to have a concrete schedule when nothing is consistent. If we're doing an experiment, we see it through no matter how late it keeps us in the lab. It was incredibly stressful not knowing when I'd need to be there and when I'd be able to go home. Of course, there were other downsides that were not about the work schedule. I remember the saddest thing that happened while I was on the job was we didn't have access to an incubator um, and the cells couldn't survive without one broke my heart to watch the tiny things I take care of every day die, especially since I was the one who had to kill them. 
Aside from that, I'd say this job was a lot like college. I was learning new things and brushing up on things I'd learned in high school almost every day. I was never bored. Hello. My name is Craig Henry Johnson, straight from the south side of Chicago. I could work from the Willis or straight out of my own better room. Now, you see, I choose to see the good in others. I try to motivate, reciprocate kindness. Now, he say, she say, how about what you say? Deep down from within. Now, I feel free as a bird flying down Main Street. I get to make my own schedule. I feel spoiled. Ooh wee. Looking like I get paid to learn, paid to be nice. Now, it do get hard sometimes. I'm going to keep going because I know I got this. Yeah. Because in five years now, in five years, I'm going to be my own accomplice. Yeah, boy. Huh. I work in retail. There's not much to it. But... It is a lot harder than it seems, especially dealing with customers. Some are annoying. They don't know how to follow directions. But at least I get health benefits. I don't hate my job, right? But I wouldn't say I get paid enough for what I do. I'm a barista at a small local cafe, right? It's simple. I think it would be simple. Until the first day of the job, the ice machine starts flooding. The entire store. The fire alarm is constantly ringing shrieks into my ears. I'm chasing a running customer who didn't think they could pay. I have an angrily testosterone-filled husband holding an ill drink like baby Jesus, yelling he wants a refund. He really thinks we're going to give him a refund? That's where it gets a little complicated. You see, I don't hate my job. I like it. It's fun. But they may have forgot to include this when they told me everything about the job. At least a $15 tips from eight-year-olds could pay towards my misery, right? <laughs> yeah. I work with people from different cultural, economic, and social backgrounds. You know what's my challenge? Being a frontline employee working with individuals to break down barriers, but have the whole system be limited. I always want to help people through their problems. I want people to learn from their mistakes. You know my client, the one that had a bad case? Yep, he terminated and completed his goals. Now he's successful with my help. Constantly ever changing and this corrupt world I'm still here and never disappear One step for my kind, two steps for their kind And three steps for my race being held on right to see accountable Flipping tables turn the switch Spreading knowledge makes the haters super duper duper sick People turn their backs way too quick But I really gotta help out, can't come down Gotta lift my people up and stand my ground Yup, <laughs> that's the sound word Again, and circles and ciphers, breaking barriers and newlywed stereotypes. Things are constantly ever changing in this corrupt world. I'm still here and never disappear to step forward but never back. Delivering a helping hand to those who never had that. Giving facts isn't all about a fixed bag. When you help people out, don't expect a pat on the back or even at that. Don't put yourself down, your dreams are safe and sound Even when no one around you understands Music can heal and it's a part of my plans Never let it go Work in 
in circles and ciphers. Stepped away from our newlywed stereotypes. These are constantly ever changing. And this corrupt world, I'm still here, never disappear. The days go on and on. But need to feed my dreams makes me grow stronger. Nonetheless, never, ever, ever doubt the rest. We stand here, nothing too special across our chest. We're humans like the ever dying rest. No more stress. The ego gets squashed once you hear the sound of cries and distress. That's my own bulletproof vest. Sending out a signal to the rest to help out, give more. Everyone can help out, give more. Now that's a wrap, yeah. Circles and ciphers, I'm working for my dreams. Yeah, yeah, circles and ciphers, I'm working for my dreams. Again, circles and ciphers, I'm working for my dreams. Circles and ciphers, I'm working for my dreams. A little dance dance. That's all we saw. My job is to make sure black people are centered in reproductive health, sex education, and civic participation. The most interesting part of my job is the spaces I get to be in. Getting to talk to elected uh, government officials, people closer to the top of the food chain than I've ever been slash people like me have ever been to is a dream. Since I'm black and I work for Planned Parenthood, I am surrounded by people who aren't like me. People who have never had to think about people like me. Um, it's difficult to censor marginalized voices in a space full of people who have never had to, never had to. I used to volunteer for Planned Parenthood when I was younger, and when I was offered a church position, I took it. Even when I get older, I still see myself working to find solutions for my community. I started right here when I was 12 years old. I braided over 120 heads in my whole entire braid. Personally, a lot of people don't like standing for a long amount of time, but me, I don't mind. A lot of people don't like sitting for a long amount of time either when they're getting their hair braided. Sometimes I just sit back and think, like, wow, I really made a lot of money while braiding, and I'm only 15 years old. I love it. It's a hustle high.
One of the first things they teach us as nurse care managers is to be trauma informed. And well, there is so much trauma surrounding the people I work with. People in crisis, experiencing homelessness, suffering injustices. I work with people over the phone, but it's not what you'd think. Sure, it's harder not being able to see their body language, but there's also an intimacy, a certain quietness over the phone. I work with all kinds of people who've been hospitalized for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes it's pretty straightforward and they know what to expect, but other times it's something new, a new illness that's suddenly surfaced for them and they don't know how to deal with that. In cases like these, there's often uncertainty and in the face of uncertainty, there tends to follow two main things, emotional turmoil and distrust. It's not unfounded either. These people are fearful and distressed and grappling with a whole lot of hurt. I mean, there's some real inequality out there with real costs on real human beings. It's hard to see. It's hard to see. There's this one guy who would end stage heart and lung disease to boot. By the time I got him to the ER, it was too late. He couldn't be resuscitated. It's hard not to blame yourself in situations like that. I kept thinking, if only I'd known what he was going through earlier, if he'd just gotten help earlier, and so on. But at the same time, I have to remember that he died with people, his people. He was comfortable in his final moments and his family was able to say goodbye. I came into his life at the very end and his whole journey had led him up to that point. Sometimes all you have is the time that you're given with someone. All you can do is make the most of it. Other times, all you can do is listen, attend to the needs and emotions that they're willing to open up about and look for the ones that they've yet to. All you can do is try to be an agent of change, helping people build partnerships, strengthen their own sense of empathy. It's humbling, the work I do. It often goes unappreciated, but it's worth it. Forging those connections, helping these people find hope from birth to death. And the Dow is down 900 points. God, that's not good. Well, it's not that bad. It's just not good for today. You see, I'm a senior registered sales associate. I'm a broker who works in stocks. It seems a bit complicated, but it's not. I basically assist financial advisors. I work with clients and open up accounts for them and help them invest in the stock market. Sure, at times it can be tedious and there's times where it's a lot of pressure to get work done under such limited time, but that's okay. I really enjoy my job. A majority of it is just talking to clients. It's almost like I'm a therapist in a way because we built a relationship, you know, the, oh, Mary, how are you? How are the kids? Oh, it's great. Good, good. And you know what? I'm good at that. I like it. I like talking to people and building a bond with them. I've been in this industry since I was 15. I've worked in other positions like a regulator, internal audit team, compliance. Those weren't for me. I didn't get to communicate with clients like I do now. And yeah, sure, maybe it was just thrown in my lap, but I'm glad it was. I'm lucky to have this job. One second. Oh, Mary, 
how are you? How are the kids? Uh, ah, that's great, great. Okay, let's take a look at those shares. I can talk about planting media till you turn gray. If you call it dirt or soil, you will rue the day. And nature doesn't have weekends or weekdays. So I work when I need and I'll do it my way. She puts me to work, and the work isn't easy. It's worth it to see them flourish and grow into the plants that you all know. And yet are annoying and like to see me fail but they're merely some bugs nothing I can't take care of so I lock them up in pesty jail well I've always been a talker since I was young, I was talking people's ears off. And I could hold long conversations with people I barely even knew. I realized I wanted to become a podcaster when I found out what podcasts were. I could be successful from talking. Something I did on a daily basis. For those who don't know, podcasts are another method to entertain, humor, and educate through speech. I feel like the biggest disadvantage of a podcast is time. You got to know the limit on certain topics. You cannot have a two hour long podcast. You got to cut it short or people will get bored. The goal for my podcast is to have some of my favorite actors and artists on it. A lot of people ask me what exactly my job is. From the name, you can't really tell. Mobile nail technician. I guess nail painter wasn't fancy enough. I drive to posh houses in the north, paint long nails, short nails of both foot and hand. Color smell of chemicals and bath salt smell of roses. But these things barely come for the hours I spend bending, driving, and answering calls. My clients, all suburban soccer moms, text me at obscene hours of the night, expecting my services. Sometimes it's for something as simple as a chip nail, but other times it's as grueling as a fifth grader's birthday party. It wasn't really meant to be like this. I wanted to study the deep sea, look at the creatures it held, but the world had different plans, and one thing led to another, and I had my mother's job. Yes, my mother was a nail tech just like me. It's kind of ironic in a cruel way, like some twisted genetics. But now that the dust settles, I'm glad for this life. Making my own hours, spending time with the ones I love most. And who knows, maybe I can get another job. Start fresh.
Communicating with vice presidents and leaders is hard. They think their job is more important than mine. It's difficult to get them to send me the materials. Materials I need to complete my projects on. It's never the same thing every day. What I do is a little different. I'm working on this project right now. I have to constantly interview people and reach out to them to follow up. People think that working in HR is just hiring and firing, but it's conversation. It's figuring out how you recruit people, create pipelines and connections. You know, I, I went to college for communication, which led me to work in advertising it took some time to realize I didn't fully enjoy it. <laughs> but what I did enjoy was talking to people and learning more about them. This job is a lot more suited to my needs. The relationship that I have with my manager is different from the other jobs I've had. It's really close, and that's contributed to that, that closeness that I feel at work. That isn't something that happens in every job. And I'm grateful for that. Yeah, my job can be hard, but what job isn't? Hmm. What's something about my job that people might not know? Well, um, people might not know that these kids are special, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. It's just that these kids go through so much every day, but they still find a way to stay engaged and active in school. They're passionate, maybe even more passionate than the other students, because they know if they want to succeed and have a fulfilling career, they have to work twice as hard. They have such promising futures, just like you.